Chair recognized the lady from Saragordo, Representative Steckman, for today's African American history presentation. Thank you, Madam Speaker. In honor of Black History Month, I wanted to shine a light on a friend of mine from North Iowa, and I appreciate that the speaker gave me time to do that today, and a, uh, Representative Samad also, so I really appreciate that. Um, to do justice to the journey of Reagan Banks, I will be using much of a story published in the Sioux City Journal, February 7, 2004. This West High student took part in a variety of activities during his high school years. He played point guard for basketball, and they went 13-0. and zero. He was a brown belt in karate and judo, and he did golden gloves boxing at 139 pounds. He was a champ. He graduated with honors from West High and went on to California, a college in California, to earn his x-ray technician degree. However, that's when things fell apart. He got in with the wrong crowd and started doing drugs. Marijuana, cocaine, meth were all my drugs of choice, Banks admitted. I wasn't beyond drinking, sniffing paint and hairspray and huffing gas, too. He returned to Sioux City in hopes of changing his life around. However, that didn't happen. I started to sell drugs. I wrote bad checks. I did jail time. No one put a gun to my head and forced me to make those choices. I did them myself. His mother, LaVita Banks, did her best to be patient with her son who was struggling with his addiction. I just didn't want him to starve, she said, but I went to sleep many nights and cried my eyes out for him. Banks made no mistake about the date of his reversal, July 26, 1988. That was the day I turned my life over to God and made my decision to be drug and alcohol free. I had considered suicide, I was that low. And I knew I couldn't do it myself. I couldn't turn my life around by myself. So I went to my brother and my pastor and had them take me to the hospital. After his hospitalization in Sioux City, Banks spent time in Cherokee, Iowa in treatment and then moved to Mason City to a facility there. Despite being sober and drug free, Banks still had to face his third felony charge and his sentencing in Sioux City. I'd changed my playground and I changed my playmates, but there was no guarantee I wouldn't go to jail. Banks returned to his hometown and stood before Josh, Judge Michael Walsh, the presiding judge in Woodbury County. Banks hoped his attempt at addressing his disease would result in compassion and probation. Banks talked about his life journey and how he had worked through his problems and rehabilitation. Judge Walsh had a feeling that Banks, even if he did go to the penitentiary, had straightened his life out. Reagan claims I gave him a second chance, but that's not it, said Judge Walsh. He gave himself a second chance. Banks returned to Manly, started his job, and enrolled in college after he was given a pardon. He was awarded an associate's degree in 1993, and excited about his success, he wanted to pursue an education in law enforcement and paramedics. Then his past came back to haunt him. I discovered I couldn't do law enforcement because of the three felonies, Banks said. Even the paramedic course was a challenge because former felons cannot handle morphine and Demerol. In 1994, determined to achieve his goals, Banks started to write letters to obtain a pardon. What impressed Walsh the most was that Banks was actively involved in his community. Banks, had, Banks went to his strongest supporter, Judge Walsh, to help him obtain the pardon from the governor. He'd been demonstrating that he was dead serious about turning his life around and that he was doing something for himself and for others. On March 15th, Banks was granted a full pardon from Tom Vilsack, governor at the time. Uh, Judge Walsh stated, he did all the work and all the credit belongs to him. He is a perfect example of how people can be successful. I'm very proud to have been a part of his success. In addition to the judge's support, Banks credits the tenacity of his wife, Annette, who stood by him through his highs and his lows. Finally, paramedic status succeed, achieved. He started out part-time at Snell's Ambulance and became full-time in 1996. Somewhere in the midst of his schooling and job and family, he decided to volunteer. 
Lots of people don't understand, said Banks. You're not a citizen when you're a felon. Sure, you're there, but you're not part of the community, and I wanted to be part of the community. <coughs> Excuse me. Banks started out small with a fundraiser for the Head Start program, deciding I was going to give of myself back to the community because that's what I had done because of what I had done to society being on drugs and alcohol. So in July of 1998, Banks began working with the YMCA and developed the North Iowa Youth Center. There were 14 kids in the program that year, and each year it attracted a few more. Five years later, the North Iowa Youth Center, Center a few more translated into 632 kids. The help Banks provides to kids is, is a constant message of prevention and alternative programs and avoiding drugs and alcohol in order to be productive citizens of the future. Banks came up with this quote for his kids, and I think it tells all about what he feels. Share your dreams. Tre treasure your blessings. Yesterday is gone. Tomorrow is not promised to you. Live for today and be the best you can be. Now, the North Iowa Youth Center serves six counties. They help kids with tutoring and provide a safe place for kids to go instead of being home alone. The kids volunteer and are rewarded with field trips. They have performed the national anthem at several sporting events, including the Minnesota NBA Timberwolves, which was broadcast on ESPN. He's an in inspiration to all that have known him, said Judge Walsh. Then Banks went on, he said, I noticed there were some things I didn't like and I decided to run for office. So he went to a city council meeting and noticed there were things that he wanted to change and work to improve. So he ran for office and was elected mayor of Manly in November uh, 4th, 2003. He became just the second African American in the state to hold an elected mayor's office. Despite his successes and achievements, Banks remains adamant that his life was not and is not an easy path to this day. It's always a rough road because of addiction, he acknowledged. There are some days that I go to bed sober, and when I wake up in the morning, I'm grateful I'm still sober. It's at that waking moment that Bank anticipates looking forward to spending his volunteer time with the kids of North Iowa. Every time I leave them, I leave with a smile, he said. And he's still smiling, 30 years sober. And last July, the North Iowa Youth Center celebrated its 20th anniversary. Reagan Banks is truly an example of how when given the opportunity, a felon can turn their life around. Thank you very much.